Cool. Hat. Okay, so we are back. <laughs> oh, it, it landed a second time. Okay, that's cool. It, that was my bad. Okay. Buddy! Yes. If you're like me, you're no doubt a big fan of this podcast, the Pope on Film. I mean, who is it? It's sweeping the nation. It's swiffering the nation. But only the real fans, the true hardcore fans, who have been with us since the beginning, only they would know the, uh, the, 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 the minutia of the show. Uh, the two undisputable facts, the two really real and in no way made up on the spot facts about the both of us, America's hottest podcasting couple. Bunny and Malin. First and foremost, Bunny, is the fact that when you are not doing the podcast, you are a celebrated wax sculptor, like Vinnie Price in House of Wax. So tell us, Bunny, what have you been working on lately? I have been working on a series of, of wax sculptures that are... that is uh, the presidential mistresses. Ooh, nice. Every, every president's side piece will be on display. So That's I didn't, good. I don't think most people know, but Joe Biden and Taylor Swift, they got some shit going on there. Okay? Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. So I you mean, just have the both of them like naked making out. Really yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then of course, right next to Taylor Swift would would be of course Stormy Daniels, and mm -hmm. just down the line through uh, Thomas Jefferson was a hard one. Okay, because like, do you really cons consider? Your, your, the black slave that you repeatedly rape over and over again to be a mistress? I, I mean, I think yeah. that falls into a separate category. But it did not seem like he had an actual mistress because of because of that. So, and then to judge and then, um, how to play that one. And then Bill Clinton's two mistresses. Uh, Monica Lewinsky and Bruce Valanche. <laughs> Not too many people know about Bruce Valanche. Yes. Uh, after I finish with this one, because uh, like you know, this is the one at the moment. This is the one I am, I am, uh, I'm most hottest to do. Uh, but after this one, I am pretty decided. I am going with famous conjoined twins. Nice, nice. That's gonna be nice. But just one uh, of and them. the. But just what? But just like one of the twins. Oh, okay. Good, 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 good. You know, focus on one. Yeah. That's nice. You know what'll save you some money? Just make one and get a mirror. Yeah. Boom! I just saved you some money. You're welcome. So it would be a, and like, the a, second. like a famous female singer who just happens to have an extra shoulder. Yeah. 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 And the second fact, which is about me, is that I'm a lover of history. I love it. But I'm also a storyteller. So this is the part of the show where I get a uh, story from the history books, maybe one that people don't know that well, and reworded via my own unique storytelling style. And that's what this is, another educationally uneducational installment of... Historic approximations, or as we like to call it, <laughs> and to be clear, that's capital H, capital A, small p, for those of you playing along at home. And also, this segment was originally called Steve's Historic Approximations for a number of years, but a dead name is dead for a reason, and so we are moving on. So what is happening in half this week? This week, we are talking about one of our most horrible presidents, and no, we are not discussing 119-year-old Joey Biden or his rival, Donnie Trump, the rapist-in-chief. We are going all the way back to 1829 and our seventh president, bloody, bloody Andrew Jackson. Yes. And the grossest, and the uh, side half 
is the grossest, most unhygienic thing to ever occur in the White House that didn't involve a cigar. Okay. Uh, and a fun little aside, I called him bloody bloody Andrew Jackson for a reason. Bunny, can you put up picture A? This is A in sign language. A. Um, I called Andrew Jackson bloody bloody Andrew Jackson because... Michael Friedman's rock musical, Bloody Bloody Andrew Jackson, preceded the rap musical Hamilton by almost a decade. Did you know that Andrew Jackson got an emo rock musical, buddy? No. Yeah, he got a freaking musical, and, he, and it was before Hamilton. Now, I'm not saying that Hamilton is a ripoff of Bloody Bloody Andrew Jackson, because Hamilton is a rap musical and a success, whereas Bloody Bloody Andrew Jackson was an emo glam rock musical comedy take on Andrew Jackson. And unlike Hamilton, Bloody Bloody Andrew Jackson uh, was a huge-ass failure. Yes. But I dare say Bloody Bloody Andrew Jackson walked so that Hamilton could run. Yes. Anyway, we'll be getting back to bloody, bloody Andrew Jackson, the Andrew Jackson emo rock musical, a little bit later. But um, uh, aside completed, back to the action. Andrew Jackson, can you put up a B? This is B in sign language. Not only am I teaching you about Andrew Jackson and rock, rock musicals, but also I'm teaching you a bit of sign language. This is B. Yes. Um, Andrew Wilberforce Jackson. His middle name was not Wilberforce, but doesn't he look like that would be his middle name? I He's go got a Wilberforce in him. He is also one of our most vampiric-looking presidents. Yes. And, that he is. And, and, and also... Like, here's his body, and then he has, like, two feet of neck. And then his head is, like, way over here. It's like his mom had sex with a giraffe. So he's, like, half human, half giraffe. Do we know that she and... didn't? Hmm? Do we know that she didn't? No, we do not. He looks like he's is there either... Is any evidence to refute? Andrew Jackson's giraffe heritage. No, there is not. I'm just and asking I, questions. Can I believe I, I mentioned. What? I believe I said this on our epic three part presidential uh, mini series where we talk about fun facts about all of the U.S. presidents. But, ten minute warning. Uh, ten minute warning. Okay, I got this. Um, this guy was either a vampire in a hammer horror film or he was. Van Helsing in a Hammer horror film. Okay. So, let's do this. Odd fact about Andrew Jackson, he married his wife, Rachel Jackson, in 1794. Please put up a uh, picture C, Bunny. But here's the thing. He married his wife in 1794. They eloped in 1791. She was previously married to a guy named Lewis, and then she met Andrew Jackson and fell in love and they eloped in 1791 and Rachel just fell in love with and Andy Jackson <coughs> 5 and uh, so they eloped and Rachel was all hey Andrew you got me that divorce right and Andy was all don't worry about it I handled it he did not and they lived in sin and bigamy for a few years nice hooray Huzzah! Then, Andrew Jackson is running for president, our boy AJ is running for president, and John Quincy Adams' supporters spent so much time on the campaign trail focusing on Rachel. On Rachel Jackson. And the bigoted, oh, she was married to two people, how dare she? And then, right before the election, Rachel died... And the former war hero, Andrew Jackson, became a widowed uh, former war hero, so he got the sympathy vote. 
and Rachel here went from possible first lady to our first dead ass lady. Yeah. Which is exciting. She looks like she's auditioning to be a ghost in a picture at a Hogwarts. Yes, she does. That's what she looks like. Um okay, back to Andrew Jackson. Can you put a uh, picture D up? Buddy. Oh wait a second. That's not Andrew Jackson. That's uh the star of the musical Bloody Bloody Andrew Jackson. He looks like he's going to go to a disco and start a panic. But yes. uh, yeah, that's uh the star of the musical Bloody Bloody Andrew Jackson. So Bloody Bloody Andrew Jackson, the man, <coughs> not not the musical. Andrew Jackson was an a-hole with a lot of questionable decisions that we are not going to discuss. Like his ethnic cleansing of Native Americans, killing thousands of, of innocent indigenous Americans. We're not going to discuss the stealing of uh, Andrew Jackson's stealing of Native American land to create Alabama, Georgia, and Florida. Can we just give Florida back to the Seminole Nation? I think we should. Possibly. It would be a good idea. Yeah. And we won't talk about how he threatened to use the military against South Carolina or the assassination attempt on his life. No, because we're going to be talking about the cheese, Bunny. Okay. The cheese. Hit the next pick, Bunford. That's E. This is E. And it E goes like this, because if you look at it in the side, oh yeah, it kind of does look a little bit like an E there. Andrew Jackson was considered a populist president. A man of the people. He was in the frontier, and dealing with the frontier back when all of our politicians were still wearing powdered wigs and cared only about the city. And he's like, when are the when is Washington? When is the, when are the politicians going to care about the normal people, the regular people in the frontier? And so when when he was president, oftentimes he would directly go to the people. Huh? I wonder what I should do in this situation. I'll ask America. Hey, America, what should I do? I'm going to do a poll, and all of you vote. And all of America was like, wow, a president who actually cares about us. A president who's not a rich person from the city. Oh, man, he's a man of the people. We love him so. So people really love Andrew Jackson. And so someone had an idea to give him a gift. Quote, the greatest cheese in America for the greatest man in America. And so, on New Year's Day in 1836, a prosperous dairy farmer named Colonel Thomas Meacham gifted Andrew Jackson with a giant wheel of cheese that you see next to me, weighing 1,400 pounds and made from the milk of 150 cows. The crazy thing is, Colonel Tom Meacham, the guy whose idea it was to create this mammoth kaiju cheese for bloody bloody Andrew Jackson, he wasn't even a fan of President Jackson. He didn't even care for the man. He was a supporter of another candidate, but Colonel Meacham was from New York, and they had just opened up the Erie Canal like about a decade before, and New York was starting to become uh, big and important. And uh, so Meacham saw the giant cheese as being a good advertisement for dairy farming and the up-and-coming uh, city of New York. Interestingly enough, Meacham also made five smaller cheese wheels to give to other notable names of the time, such as Martin Van Buren and Daniel Webster. So... When the devil came after Daniel Webster, it was because the devil wanted the cheese. Yes. So, um, the giant cheese was displayed in Utica and before hopping on a boat and being delivered to the White House, where it stayed unrefrigerated 
out in the open for a whole last year. Oh. Just really think about that, buddy. No refrigeration. It's a swampland. Imagine that cheese in the summer, buddy. <laughs> no air conditioning in 1836 in the White House. I don't even know if they have curtains in 1836 in the White House. Just imagine the smell. Just imagine the flies, the heat, the, 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 the just, just imagine it, Bunny. Imagine in the summer, and people didn't wash their hands, Bunny, back then. There was no hand washing at all. Okay? So really think about this, jeez! Because it stayed out in the open, four feet in diameter, two feet thick, over 1,400 pounds, which means that this cheese could own 23.3 Tammy Crap stalls because the farts aren't a problem anymore. That is an I think you should leave reference. Uh, I think you should leave with Tim Robinson, the greatest show on television, despite what Bunny says. Anyway, for a year, the giant <coughs> wheel of cheese stayed unrefrigerated out in the open in the White House. And then... In 1837, as bloody, bloody Andrew Jackson's second term was coming to a close, Andrew Jackson said, hey, so I'm president, bloody, bloody Andrew Jackson. Uh, hopefully they do a musical of me one day. We'll see. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, my second term is nearly over, and I will be hosting a big gala ball to celebrate the end of my term. And because I am a man of the people, my party is open to all of you. So all of you come in and come to the White House. There will be speeches and entertainment. And Jeez. as far as snacks, okay, I've got an idea. What you see here, Bunny, less than a minute. What you see here is a drawing of that event where people came and just ate the cheese. Oh. Kids and old people and adults just walking up to this unrefrigerated year-long White House cheese and getting their dirty hands and just cutting and grabbing whole pieces of this White House cheese and putting it in their mouth, Bunny. This occurred on February 22nd, 1837. Andrew Jackson threw a party at the White House and it, just imagine the smell. Uh, change it to F really quick. E, E, F. This is F. Um, and to tie this whole thing all together, Bunny, Please tell us more about bloody, bloody <laughs> Andrew Jackson. Um, so we were in the middle of half and then it cut off. Uh, the previous picture that we had showed was a picture of everyone eating the cheese. And this is a description of cheese eating. Uh, for hours did a crowd of men, women, and boys hack at the cheese, many taking large chunks of it away with them. When they commenced, the cheese weighed 1,400 pounds and only a small piece was saved for the president's use. The air was redolent with cheese. The carpet was slippery with cheese and nothing else was talked about at Washington that day. Even the scandal about the wife of the president's secretary of war was forgotten in the tumultuous jubilation of, of that great occasion. Strangers just all grabbing at Andrew Jackson's cheese with their unwashed hands. Uh, the smell was apparently so strong, the smell of the giant wheel of cheese that had just sat out for a year, that the next president was Martin Van Buren, who was one of the five men who got the, the small baby wheels of cheese, the smaller wheels of cheese. Um, 
And when Van Buren moved into the White House, he was just automatically blown away by the smell. And he said that the smell of Andrew Jackson's cheese lasted in the White House for months. Okay. So, so that's exciting. And then, just to tie it all together, Bloody Bloody Andrew Jackson, the emo rock musical that actually exists... Um, was a big failure. It went to Broadway and then it left Broadway fairly quickly. It was not a successful musical. But what if? But George Santos the was one of the backers. Uh, sure. <laughs> but here's the thing. What if the musical is rewritten to be more cheese-focused? As it should be. I, because I right now, be, yeah. you know, so often when you think of presidents, you only think of one thing. Taft got stuck in a bathroom. Uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln, he was a vampire hunter. But um, not a lot of people are thinking about Andrew Jackson, period. And when they are, they usually think about things like um, the ethnic cleansing of Native Americans. But what if we could make him America's cheesiest president and make cheese more of a focus so this is my idea so we do bloody bloody Andrew Jackson we do six performances the first five are the normal musical but if you come on like the Tuesday shows that's when you get bloody bloody Andrew Jackson the cheese version okay but here's one of the problems. I mean, if it's going to be cheese-focused, all right, it would have to. It would have to include that yellow cartoon guy from the 70s commercials who was always hankering for a hunk of cheese. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, hankering for a hunk of... I don't know who his agent is. Yeah, I don't know. Probably the grimy mold guy agent. Yeah. So, that's exciting. Um, in my mind, the cheese has to be the narrator of the play. In a very corky St. Clair, red, white, and blame style. Oh! I didn't see you there. It's me, old Mr. Cheese, and I I sure do have a lot of stories to tell. I like to tell my favorite, though, about a president who loved cheese. And then we move into the first song of uh, populism. Yay, yay. <laughs> and, and there you go. It's a cheese musical. And I'm not joking. The first song in the musical is called Populism. Yay, yay. And it sucks. Really? Yeah, I've been listening... Because of, of this hap, I've been listening to the original cast album of Bloody Bloody Andrew Jackson. It's not that good at all. But I do like the love song between Andrew Jackson and Rachel when they first meet and fall in love and decide to elope. Um, I, 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 the song is called Illness as a Metaphor. I actually kind of enjoy it, but... Um, the music of the musical Bloody Bloody Andrew Jackson is about as memorable as the music from Popeye the Musical. Yes. So there might be one or two that you'll remember. So there you go. But that's it for my story of Bloody Bloody Andrew Jackson. And without a doubt, the grossest, most unhygienic thing to ever occur in the White House that didn't include a cigar. Uh, I, I hope you learned a lot. I sure did. And we will see you next week for more educationally uneducational fun with uh, historic approximations or hap and cut on that. It, 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 you have to say your big thing, funny, even though we're gonna, here we go.